This is a really good question and could honestly be the subject of its own video. I'll give you a quick explanation here, but I'll do like a more formal edited video going over this. The user asks, why aren't environmental variables persisted when you SSH? Wouldn't the SSH session be a child of your bash session and inherit the environmental variables? So the answer is yes, when I run the SSH command, SSH is, is an external command, it will get forked by my shell and it will inherit the environmental variables. But what does SSH do when you invoke it? It's a client, it connects to a server. That server is responsible for, for creating a shell session, maybe bash, maybe something else on a remote end and then hooking it up to you. So that shell session that gets created on the remote end won't have those environmental environmental variables. Now there are ways you can pass environmental variables or maybe you can have them set on the remote end, but a lot of these, there's a lot of security implications with this. So a lot of it's kind of like disabled by default depending on your operating system and how SSH is installed. Uh, take a look at this. So this is from the SSH man page, specifically the SSHD underbar config man page. And you can see there is an option here, permit user environment. So this is important. The server has to decide whether it's going to allow certain things like this to be created. So don't forget when you SSH into a machine, it's on a remote end. So it's not a child process. It doesn't have the whole slew of processes that your client machine has. These are two different kernels with two different process tables. So they're not a child of the other one. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind.